Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Mark along with Anusha. I want to start right with uh, breaking news. A major crash has shut down southbound I-25 near Castle Rock. Yeah, we are talking about at least seven cars involved in this crash. I want to give you a live look at CDOT. That just ahead of the crash again, this is I-25 southbound near Castle Rock. The good news is in about like the last 20 minutes or so, we started to see uh, the emergency responders open up at least one or two lanes and letting people through. It was a pretty big scene. You know, you had seven cars that had crashed near, near mile marker 185. They do think that black ice and ice were an issue. This is a look at what it was like earlier today. Yeah, you can see the rollover crash right there and just how slick those roads look. These are pictures put out by Colorado State Patrol and you can literally see the layer of ice right there. Just how slick it is. Keep in mind if you are heading out the door this morning that just because the snow has stopped falling, there was so much melting, it got cold overnight and that's when we see scenes like this. Mm -hmm. Be careful out there. Yeah, one person did have to be taken to the hospital. Crews are still working on reopening, clearing that road out and reopening to let people through. We will, of course, continue to give you a live look throughout the morning, especially if you are headed south towards Castle Rock so that you can kind of find a detour or avoid that area if possible this morning. Also want to give you a look at I-70 right now because it was gnarly during the storm. So much different this morning. We've been kind of keeping tabs on it through the morning. Uh, traffic seems to be flowing all right. The restrictions are lifted. We know lots of people are trying to get up to the high country, especially with all of that fresh powder. So glad to share that things are opening up and running a lot more smoothly there. Now we just have the normal I-70 weekend traffic. Right. Everybody trying to get up there about two hours or so to Breckenridge. That's not the worst thing in, no. the, in the world. Uh, Want to bring in Chris Bianchi right now. And Chris, we saw a lot of snow, some places measuring up into the 50 and 60 range. Now we, we saw four to five feet of snow for some of us in the foothills for the west and south sides of the metro area, likely our biggest overall snowstorm in 22 years for us, going back to the March of 2003 snowstorm. It was a whopper of a snowstorm, but we're dealing with the black ice, as we mentioned this morning. So uh, a question I've been getting, I kind of want to explain this throughout the morning as well. What exactly is black ice? Obviously, uh, the ice itself is not black. What it is, it's a new thin, very thin layer of ice that happens with a little bit of that melting, and then you get that little kind of thin layer that makes the road, uh, the ice on the road look transparent. We were just showing you those pictures. The only reason you could see that ice was because we had the lights on it, but in many cases now, this morning, especially on those back roads, those shaded roads, you may not be able to see that ice. So please here, folks, take it slow out on the roads on this Saturday morning. Temperatures starting to crack freezing uh, finally for us here in town and across the eastern plains, but still mostly below freezing right now around the metro area and throughout eastern Colorado. High today will top out in the upper 40s. That'll help melt off some of that snow, but again, that'll lead to more black ice, especially this evening. Watch out after dark. Snow, southern Colorado seeing that snow primarily right now. That's kind of lifting north up by kind of Battlement Mesa seeing some of that snowfall. All thanks to this area low pressure. This is, by the way, the same storm system that brought us that snow in the Denver area is kind of sitting and spinning. It's what we call a cutoff low. It's not attached to the jet stream. So kind of think of a, a train off its tracks. That's basically what this low is right now. So it's just kind of sitting and swirling and sitting and swirling. And that means more snow for our southern mountains from that same area, low pressure. That snow will continue to lift off to the north as we head through the overnight hours. Could lead to a rain or a grapple shower tonight for us in the Denver area into early tomorrow morning. I have details on all that coming up in my full forecast. And this morning, we're also starting to hear more about the dangerous conditions that people were caught in, especially Clear Creek and Gilpin counties, where both counties had to declare a local emergency. Yeah, they got a lot of snow up there, and a family living near Blackhawk nearly lost someone in that snow. Thursday night, Bren Wilson, Wilson's tractor got stuck plowing a rural road above Blackhawk. When he got out of the tractor, the snow was up to his chest with no way out. The Alpine rescue team quickly took the call, skiing and digging through snow for hours to get to him. The snow conditions were challenging, to say the least. Roughly five feet or so of fresh, unconsolidated powder that made snow machines and skiing and snowshoeing very, very difficult. 
Rescuers on skis reached them first. He was sent to the hospital with hypothermia this morning. We are learning, luckily, he is back home with his family. Expected to recover. Some good news there. Also some good news out of Clear Creek County. Law enforcement said that they have finished sweeping every road in the county to make sure no one was trapped. Said those roads are now cleared. First responders were busy throughout the storm. They said a lot of people were trying to beat I-70 traffic by taking side roads and then got stuck. Rescuers used their snowcat to try to get people out. It will turn on a dime and gets us a lot of places that you can't get any other way. We can actually get in and try to rescue people, which is what we did yesterday. Law enforcement there spent Thursday night and yesterday morning sweeping every road in the county. And this morning, some people still do not have power after the storm, but the numbers are a lot better than what we saw yesterday. Excel Energy is reporting 133 outages right now, impacting about 900 customers. The number is continuing to go down. They are making progress. Excel says their crews have restored more than 1,200 outages, affecting 107,000 people. We appreciate all the work that those Excel, Excel uh, workers are doing because it is a lot of work to get that back up and running. Colorado State Patrol says unprepared truckers not following chain laws were the cause of that two day shutdown on I-70. This morning, though, we are learning that very few of them were actually ticketed, just 12 to be exact. Those 12 that were written most likely came from trucks that were so stuck that we had to sit behind them and wait. Truckers who did not chain up faced a $600 fine. If they blocked the road after not chaining up, that goes up to $1,000. Sergeant Patrick Rice with CSB says in an emergency situation like what we just saw, they're not really prioritizing those tickets. Once we get into the emergency and crisis mode of the road being blocked up, we're more interested in getting the road open and moving. Sergeant Rice says since the traction law kicked in back in September, they are ticket, they've ticketed 800 truckers for breaking the rules. Most of those tickets were issued during non-emergency situations. It is yet another mishap for United Airlines, a plane that was supposed to arrive in Denver yesterday, never even took off from Southern Oregon. The Boeing plane was missing a panel when it landed there. 139 passengers and six crew members flew into Medford, Oregon from San Francisco on the United flight. After landing there safely, airport workers noticed that there was a whole panel from the Boeing 737 missing during a post-flight inspection. The plane was supposed to take off from Denver, take off for Denver from Oregon in the afternoon. That flight was delayed, later canceled. They said, we're not flying without that panel. This is one of the many recent incidents when it comes to flying United. Just last week, there was a rocky landing at a Houston airport where a plane skidded off the runway. Before that, in San Francisco, a plane lost its tire after taking off. Just not a fun couple of weeks to fly. A judge's conditions have now been met. Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis can continue her case against former President Donald Trump in Georgia. Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade, who had a relationship with Willis, resigned from the case. There are many questions about the election interference case moving forward with the lead prosecutor out and Willis's conduct now being slammed by the judge. CNN's Brian Todd shares more on the courtroom drama. As she fought to stay on the Trump case, Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis struck a defiant tone. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. That fiery testimony, described today as unprofessional by District Judge Scott McAfee, as he still allowed Willis to remain on the case. But Willis isn't free and clear just yet. A Georgia State Senate committee is still investigating whether she engaged in improper conduct in the Trump case. And she's been in hot water for this type of thing before. This is the second judge now who's been dealing with the case, Judge McBurney. The first one said, told the DA that she'd used bad judgment and there was a problem, an appearance problem. And so now we have a second round of that. That refers to when Fulton County Judge Robert McBurney blocked Willis from filing charges against one of Georgia's fake electors because she had held a fundraiser for his opponent. It's a what are you thinking moment. Um, if the optics are horrific. Willis, a Democrat and Fulton County's first female district attorney, had been in office for only one day when then-President Trump called Georgia's Secretary of State in January 2021 and urged him to find votes to overturn the 2020 election results in Georgia. The single mother of two in her early 50s says she was raised by a single father. Her father himself was a lawyer and a member of the Black Panther movement. Her name, Fani, is Swahili and means prosperous. Originally from California, Willis attended Howard University in Washington, D.C., then got her law degree from the Emory School of Law. 
She forged her professional reputation with successful prosecutions in a massive cheating scandal in Atlanta's public schools and by bringing anti-corruption charges against rapper Young Thug. A workaholic that is very driven, very smart, and, you know, very, like, if you're on a case, it's step one, step two, step three, get to it. From here, analysts say the pressure on Willis to be above reproach in the Trump case will be enormous, and one veteran attorney advises her to toe that line as far under the radar as possible. If I'm Fannie Willis, I want to retreat from the limelight of this case right now in the sense that let your line prosecutors, let the team you assembled be the face of this case.